I work in rivers for many different reasons, but I think when you get down to that subconscious reason that many of us work in aquatic systems, it's the subconscious recognition of how important water is. Brook trout, which for many, you know, is a symbol of, of clean water. And not just clean water, but you know, the cleanest of clean water. Shaver's Fork, uh, way, way back, turn of the uh, early 20th century, was essentially high elevation virgin spruce forest that was also had a really outstanding brook trout fishery. It was known at that time as one of the, uh, one of the greatest brook trout fisheries in the East. Early in the 20th century, uh, there was a lot of uh, logging activity, commercial logging activity on the mountain. The railroad that was built to bring that timber out fundamentally changed the character of that river. As a result of all of that, it's become uh, a much wider, shallower, uh, warmer, less diverse uh, environment for, for trout. Wildlife Associated Recreation in West Virginia is about a billion and a half dollars a year. If you tease the fishing part out, sort of apportion that across all the miles of, of fishable streams that we have here in West Virginia, you end up with a value uh, of about $40,000 a mile. It can be much higher than that if the trout stream is even better than average. Um, we've got Shaver's Fork right now, which is maybe a little less than average in some places in terms of its, its fishery, and we're trying to bring it to a level that's, that's better than average. Much of our research over the last 10 years or so has been uh, trying to, to not only document the, the factors that are uh, contributing to brook trout decline, but also rank them in order. So once we identified the problem and, and identified these limiting factors, uh, the, the key limiting factors that have not been addressed or had not been addressed at the time uh, was, what, was water temperature. Oh, yeah. So the reason I'm kept capturing everything right now. And then finally, these connections between the river and the tributaries where they spawn. Quantifying temperature patterns in rivers can be very difficult. The advent of the use of drone technology is really interesting in this regard because you can have these drones that fly um, thermal imaging cameras. The drone can fly the river less than an hour and actually get a snapshot of temperature conditions in the river. A question that should be asked and is asked of, of any researcher is, is, you know, what is the relevance of your research? You know, from that regard, this particular effort in Shaver's work, I think, is, is relevant because it comes this model system in which we look at and say, well, if we can apply these principles, if we can apply these approaches, that we can replicate this effort. On another level, it is a place that West Virginia can look at the history of it and can look at the future of it and be proud about it and be excited about both what it was and what it can be.